Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. This is Kaptan Baha, Baha Juner. Uh, I'm here to talk about actually the recent decision by Delta Airlines to get rid of their 777 fleet. Uh, this was on the headlines a few uh, days ago and uh, I decided to make a video about this because there was a lot of interesting trivia about this decision. Um, Delta also announced that they are going to retire pretty soon their uh, MD-88 and MD-90 models and I don't think that anybody is surprised about that. Uh, what they're trying to do, they're trying to consolidate the type of aircraft that they're flying right now. So in, instead of having five, six, seven different type of airplanes, they are going to concentrate on uh, certain Boeings and certain Airbuses. Seems to me that Air, uh, Airbus has been in a pretty good winning position with Delta lately. Uh, they have ordered uh, Airbus 350s instead of the Boeing 787s. They have chosen uh, Airbus 330 900 Neos as the replacement of some of their older models like uh, 767s and so forth. They have the second biggest order on the model after Air Asia. And of course, with the market that it's been right now, we don't know what's going to happen to the Air Asia order as well. So the question is, Delta decided to get rid of the certain older models, MD-88s and MD-90s. But why they decided to get rid of the 777s? Earlier models, they're, they're manufactured in 1999 or so forth. So they are more than 20 years old. Obviously, they're coming up in age. 777 fleet, it's only 18 aircraft. So it's a very minor sub-fleet in terms of the whole grand scheme of the airplanes that Delta operates these days. They ordered some 777s in 1990s and then they came out when Boeing came out with the LR models in order to serve some long and thin markets like, um, I don't know, Los Angeles to Sydney and so forth. They decided to go with the LR model. Um, LR is an interesting aircraft because you can add one, two or three additional fuel tanks to that aircraft and then you can uh, achieve an aircraft that has a range of 8,500 and some more miles. Um, despite of this, uh, not a lot of orders have been achieved because when you fly those kind of long thin routes, you have to charge a lot of money because you don't turn the airplane around in fast enough that you know it will generate a lot of revenue. So it was a niche aircraft from the beginning. I think there are some only 59 or, or so many of them in that range that has been ordered by the airlines. And then they have also some 200 ER models. But Delta has always been using Airbus equipment on or transatlantic routes. And then 777 ERs, 200 ERs and 200 LRs as I mentioned, there are only 18, 18 of them in the hundreds of airplanes that uh, operates. So in order to cut back on uh, the number of fleets that they operate, number of type of airplanes that they operate, they decided to get rid of the 777s. Some of them, the early, uh, later models, they're pretty new, like they're ordered in 2008 or so. And I'm sure that they will be able to find customers for those. Um, and maybe they'll sell them to Airbus to get more Airbuses and so forth. So uh, who knows what's going to happen to them, but some of them will have a second life or a third life with different carriers. At the same time, the LR models and ER models, they don't share the same aircraft engines. So because of that, it creates even more headache in terms of maintenance costs. So you have to um, you have to store the maintenance parts for Trent engines that they're on the LRs. You have to store the... Um, maintenance parts for the engines that they are on the GE engines that they are on the 200 ERs and it creates a nightmare. Plus it has a factor of creating a nightmare uh, logistically when you're operating an aircraft. So uh, depending on the route, in some routes you cannot swap these airplanes just in case one goes AOG. Uh, so because of that now that they are receiving also Airbus 350s and 330 NEOs uh, those are actually one-on-one -on -one replacements with slightly less of a seating um, for the 777 aircraft. So what it looks like, Delta is going to receive these airplanes, uh, keep receiving the airplanes from Airbus, and they are going to have an only Airbus fleet, 330 and 350 fleet, for the long-haul flights. They are going to keep their uh, 767s, those are the workhorses for them. 
some of them they're coming up in age i'm sure they are going to get rid of the some of them that uh that they are requiring huge amount of maintenance as well but uh, when it comes to triple sevens, it doesn't come as a surprise that the Delta wants to uh, get rid of them. Now, the question is, here's an interesting trivia too. Delta has actually bought a triple seven a few years ago. I don't remember how long it was, but I can dig that information up. Um, and uh, they actually bought a triple seven just for parts and when Richard Anderson was the CEO of the company. Uh, on Twitter, he actually mentioned the fact that, well, we thought that we were going to buy this thing for $10 million, but we actually bought a 777 for $7.7 .7 million. And that was pretty interesting. Obviously, this airframe was not in a restorable condition, or even if it was, it was going to cost them a lot of money. And because of that, uh, they decided to part it out and use it for, for parts. That way, you can actually get the parts a lot cheaper than ordering them from Boeing. Now, with this new world that it's gonna come into the flying public and so forth, they don't need the capacity of the 777R. Um, and some of them, I'm sure, in the second-hand market, they will find really good replacements for, um, uh, for other 777 operators or maybe some additions to the other 7, uh, 777 operators too. The question comes up quite often, well, these are nice airframes, and some of them, they're not that old. Can we convert these things to um, freighters? Freighter conversion is a different, it's a different beast. Since the density of the weight density of the passengers are a lot lighter than the cargo density, one of the things that has to be done during the freighter conver conversion is to get rid of the uh, floor and then reinforce the store uh, reinforce the floor with um, with heavier with material that it's going to support the heavier weight of the cargo not only that but you also have to put the necessary mechanisms in there so that you can actually slide the cargo in inside of the uh, aircraft as well so this is a very tedious process it's an expensive process it also is a process that requires huge amount of technological uh, manpower and know-how so far, only uh, Israel aircraft industries in Israel has the conversion STC for triple sevens, but that is also for 300 models and not for the 200 models. I don't know if they can get those things for 200 models as well. Is it going to be that easy? I have no idea. Maybe I should call Bedek Industries and call them and find it out, right? But what I was told by certain people, certain mechanics, uh, that there's a difference between a 777 that it was built for freighter purposes and a 777 that was built for passenger purposes. So what it is, is I was told that the four beams on these Delta airplanes are composite and that's basically preventing the installation of, of a cargo floor on this aircraft. So, will these aircraft see a cargo conversion? Well, I don't know. But the thing is, if that information is correct, then in that case, it's going to be very highly unlikely for them to work as a cargo workhorse. But at the same time, you never say never. And the other thing is, these are 200 models. Even though Boeing builds 200 models freighters off of the 200 model uh, fuselage, at the same time, uh, nobody has the capability of converting them or has the approval of converting them to freighter models. IAE came up with a conversion of the 300 model to a freighter, but not 200 model. So it remains to be seen if they can accomplish this or not. They're a very successful cargo conversion company. Um, so far, they have done more than 250 conversions. They're very popular right now. They're really busy as well with the 767 conversions and they just came up with a 737-800 conversion as well. So if they're a very successful company, will they be able to convert these two into freighters? It remains to be seen. But for now, I think some of the models that we are seeing that Delta is getting rid of them, they're gonna see some, some of them they're gonna see chopping block, but also some of them they may see a second life or a third life with different operators. Remains to be seen, but at the same time, 
Now that I explained it, does it make sense to you that carrying only 18 airplane subfleet with two different engines doesn't make any sense? So that's why Delta got rid of them. This is it for now. I hope to see you in one of my next videos. Subscribe to my channel. Write a comment below about the subjects that you would like me to carry. For now, so long.